In this video we'll look at an IK chain with an HD solution. You'll notice that this is a sliding mechanism and we also have a rotating end. There are also constraints on the sliding mechanism so that um, it doesn't go beyond 90 degrees in one direction and minus 15 degrees in another direction. This uh, kind of a mechanism leverages the geometry of the objects to produce the boning so we won't have to specifically place bones they will be automated for us. Now the first step in setting up something like this requires you to build a series of geometries and uh, have those geometries make sense for how the mechanism would work. These geometries obviously have a kind of nesting property making sense for something that telescopes. The cylinder on the back end will represent the hinge and um, at the terminal end we have something called a dummy object. The dummy object essentially allows us to have a handle to manipulate this system by and it doesn't render. To place a dummy you can go to the create uh, menu and find inside here helpers and if you select helpers then you'll notice inside here is dummy. You can just click and drag to whatever size you like and as I said the dummy doesn't render. Um, it's just going to be used to terminate the IK solution and allow us to have a handle. The next thing you need to do is be certain that the pivot points that go with all of the geometries make sense uh, in terms of the mechanism. So for all of these geometries I have positioned the pivot point along the center axes of this sliding ramp and I've placed the pivot point at the parent end of each of the geometries. Let's go to wireframe so this might be more evident. You'll notice if I select if I select um, any one of the geometries, uh, you'll notice that the pivot point, the gizmo, is going to reside out here at the parent end. Now if you've not positioned, um, repositioned the pivot point on a geometry before, go to the hierarchy tab and underneath the hierarchy tab you'll find where it says pivot and then select pivot only and you'll notice now that the pivot for this particular geometry is selected. With that, with that pivot point selected, now the move and rotate tools affect just the pivot point and not the geometry. It will allow us to reposition this pivot point to some other location that makes sense. All of these pivot points are pushed towards the parent side so that the uh, chain in the end makes sense in terms of how it's resolved at the dummy object. If we didn't have a dummy object and a, some sort of control point out here at the end, then the last geometry would basically flop around um, uncontrollably. So all of my pivot points have been placed and you'll notice even on my cylinder the pivot point has been placed at the center um, of that so that makes the most sense in terms of this revolving or rotating around um, in the uh, y-axis. Next I'm going to the select and link tool. You find the select and link tool here in the upper left. If I select that I'm going to select each child and link it to its parent moving from the junior most to the senior most um, member of this assembly. So you always select and link from child to parent. So I've selected link from this child to this parent and now from this child to this parent and from this child to the next parent and from the last box as a child to the cylinder um, as the senior most parent in this assembly. Now that all of these items have been linked together, we can set up an HD solution. If I go to the animation pull down, I can pull down to where it says IK solvers and find HD solver. When it comes to placing the HD solver, you want to start from the senior most element and move to the junior most. Now you could have a far more complicated assembly in an IK solution that includes a series of um, HD solutions to cause a mechanism to work. This is very simple. So we have one simple solution that goes from uh, the senior most to the junior most here. So with the senior most selected, animation, IK solver, HD solver, and click all the way down here at the dummy object. <laughs> what you'll see happen is a series of bones have been created automatically beginning at the cylinder and ending at the dummy object and the terminal bone out here is always a little knuckle and that's conveniently placed uh, right inside the dummy. So now with my assembly joined, linked together, and boned with the HD solution, 
I'm going to return to the hierarchy tab and instead of pivot we're going to move over onto the IK tab and inside the IK tab if we go ahead and pull this menu over the screen real estate you'll notice there are a series of rollouts for both sliding and rotating joints and um, what we can do now is go through and limit the sliding and rotation that occurs on the joints that go between each one of these bones. Starting with the senior most bone, <clears throat> you'll notice inside here that um, sliding joints are all inactive by default, but all axes are active uh, in terms of rotation by default. And we know we want this to rotate about the Y, so we need to be certain that the X axis is not active and that the Z axis is not active. The Y axis wants to be active, and we can always come back and limit the amount of rotation that we'll allow here. And this particular piece is really something that does nothing. If this was to be, say, something fabricated out of steel, this box would essentially be welded right onto that cylinder in my configuration here. So I, I don't need this to do anything, so it'll neither slide nor rotate. So I'm going to turn off all the axes of that element in this assembly. Next element in the assembly, I want to be certain that uh, this item is now going to uh, slide, and it's going to slide just in the x-axis, but I want no rotation here. So we need to be certain all of the rotation is turned off on this item, and that we're only going to allow sliding in the x-direction. So that will be active, and the y and the z-axis will be inactive. We also want to limit this. We don't want this box to slide all the way through and out the other side, and we don't want it to pull out. And if you don't remember uh, what the length of the box is, which this should be the length of the box minus whatever amount you want to have embedded, <clears throat> you can simply scrub in the from and to fields inside the interface until you find the value that makes the most sense um, in terms of your assembly. And I think I'm going to have mine set to minus 110. And I think I'm going to have it go to minus 5 in the 2 direction. The values for this would probably be the same for the last piece. Go ahead and select that. Once again, we want no rotation. And we only want sliding in the x direction, so we'll make that active. I'm going to make this limited. I believe we made this minus 110. And this is also minus 5. If you're uncertain of what these numbers actually mean, scrub the spinner here until you see one value represents um, a minimum and the other value re represents a maximum. Okay, so I have my series of geometries. Their pivot points have been relocated. They have uh, been linked together from the junior most to the senior most element in the assembly, and then the HD solver was applied from the senior most to the junior most element of the assembly. And so now what I want to do is test this out and see if it works. Um, I've put constraints in all the joints so that I've limited the amount of sliding and rotation. So what I should find if I select the terminal point and begin to move it, that the constraints I put on sliding limit the amount of movement of the boxes so they neatly collapse inside of each other and that the rotation placed on the cylinder allows me to rotate this around the y-axis.